Why does Hollywood get Highland dress so wrong? We'll see how much the whiskey is affecting your judgment. Yeah, we'll just dive yeah, right in. Yeah, I'm, I'm not the historian, so I will, I will say this. <clears throat> they seem to be getting it better. They seem to be improving than they did, let's say, you know, 100 years ago, 50 years ago, whatever mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. time frame Hollywood's existed. Um, it's been around for like 100 years, yeah. Yeah. Um, my, my mind goes to... It, they're trying to get better. Costuming is getting better. It's not perfect. I mean, it's still a story that you're trying to tell. There's still, you know, right. limitations on what they can do and can't do. Um, but I would kind of give a pat on the back to historians, to people who love costume, mm -hmm. love doing things properly. I will give a pat on the back to you people, and I'll, I'll, I'll include you in that as well, oh, um, in, in putting pressure and critiquing Hollywood and saying, yeah. no, it's not good enough. You're wrong here, you're wrong there, the riding boots shouldn't have been that, this is wrong, that's wrong, but but Riding boots, and what are you talking of, about? Yes, exactly. Um, you know, picking it apart and being critical. The more critical people are of Hollywood, the better they will be, the more they have to raise yeah. the bar yeah. across the different, you know, production mm -hmm. studios or mm -hmm. whatever. So I give a tip of my hat, if I was wearing one, you get a, you know, yeah, nothing from me now. But I give a tip of my hat, to those who are critical of it, who are forcing them to up their game, because the more they up their game, mm -hmm. the better it becomes, the more historically accurate it becomes, and it's less Braveheart, blue face paint, and you know that kind right. of thing, made up right. stories. Right, and more and more Robert the Bruce. Yeah, it's yeah, it is Hollywood. There will always be an element of not a documentary to it, right. and good right. storytelling to it, and twisting the truth for the narrative of the story. But at the same yeah. time, the the clothes can still you know have room for improvement, and I mm -hmm. think have improved. Mm -hmm. I think um, I had a couple of thoughts on this. There's uh, the first example or set of examples that came to my mind was that um, there's actually been like three different movies about Rob Roy made. Uh, one was like way back in the day, I forget what year. Um, might have been it was like a yeah it was like a 1930s okay. early talkie. Oh, yeah. And then there was a Disney one in the 50s, and then there's the one that we all know and love. Uh, from the 90s with Liam Neeson and if you look at those uh, you can see the progression of the costume and getting better and better and better over the course of those decades um, although it funnily enough the Disney one actually has a couple of details in it like castellated hose which when I saw I was like oh castellated hose that's cool nicely done um, you know so it was, it, that was uh, uh, considering it was done in the 50s I was like okay they yeah, actually made a details. sincere attempt yeah. you know um, but at the same time, you still have things like, you know, you know, Highlanders with little tiny heater shields, you know, like Knights in Shining Armor and stuff like that and weirdness. But um, so that's one progression I've seen, seen that it's kind of cool. Um, and then um, the other thing that uh, kind of contrary to that is uh, there's a guy named Atten Shea or Atten Shea who does films, history films on YouTube. And he made a video about Hollywood. And he said, look, at some point, you just have to make up your mind that it's just a movie. It is entertainment. And you kind of have, you know, as much as we get frustrated by some of this stuff, at some point you just kind of have to like turn turn your criticism on, which is like, okay, I'm just here to be entertained. It's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. It is fiction. But, uh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. where I fall. Um, uh, I'm squarely in that camp. I, I, you know, shh, don't, don't, don't kill me, but I enjoy Braveheart for what it is. It's, I don't view it as historically accurate. Um, would they have done better if they put the disclaimer at the front of it? You know, you know, it has been adapted for, you know, whatever. You know, some kind of disclaimer at the front. This isn't history. It's it's close. A work of fiction. Um, yes. Um, sure, but for what it is, it's, it's well done. It's well produced. Um, for the effect that it had on Highland wear and the entire, you know, uh, you know focus on the culture. Yeah. It, it, we kind of have to be grateful because it was, yeah. a, it was a watershed event. Yeah, and it really got the modern kilting industry going. Yes, and I, I would say in not quite the same, you know, instantaneous bam, but in a similar way, Outlander has had a positive, a net positive effect. Oh yeah. You take all the negatives and all the positives, and you weigh them, you know, back and forth, and it's a net positive. Same thing with Braveheart. Yeah. Yes, there is historical inaccuracies in it, but it's still a net positive. Mm -hmm. The, uh, and, and Outlander, you've got the, uh, I, the the two things that we always point out about Outlander that are irksome 
are the boots. Uh, because at some point somebody thought that the uh, the traditional shoes just looked too wimpy. They didn't look manly enough. Um, and then the uh, the uh, the muted tartans, the muted weathered, you know, yeah. invented invented yeah. tartans for the show. We're just kind of like, no, they actually, yeah, ta da, you know, no, no, they would have been a lot brighter than that. A lot more red, you know, and they didn't actually more. have clan tartans at that point, really. Yep. Not really. Um, but other than that, the costuming is generally considered to be very, very good. You know, for the for the time period it's, it was made, they yeah. the woman who did it, whose name is escaping me, I apologize, but she did a lot of work to try and get it right. right. But the decisions that were made, this is another point that that comes up to me is that usually the errors come in with um, some kind of a bow to modern aesthetics, modern fashion. So, for instance, we are used to and and modernly people send tend to seem to really like earthier tartans. Yeah. So. That plus everything, everything that's old or medieval or renaissance or 18th century has to be weathered looking and, and primitive looking and dirty because, you know, they didn't know how to have wash themselves until 1865. Everybody knows that. Um, so that you, you, you're when Hollywood is trying to bow to modern expectations of how things should look or what looks attractive, that's where they go wrong. It's like you'll typically see more errors in the costuming and the hair uh, and the makeup shoes. of the and the shoes of the of the lead characters than you will the extras. Yes. There are movies where like everybody looks perfectly historically accurate except for the the female lead who looks very fashionable for today's standards. Because yeah, who's gonna want to see a woman look like they looked like back then? Ma Max nodding his head here. It's like yeah. yeah. I I will say this much in defense of Outlander, the weathered tartans where I think they probably um, based their tartan designs based on what you were talking about. Like, mm -hmm. oh, it's old timey. It's in the, you know, the 16th, whatever, you know, 1700s. Therefore, it should be old and grimy and, and brown and dirty looking. I think they also had something to do with the comeuppance of, or the comeuppance? The, Come the, the, yeah. the coming up of weathered tartans in, like, how they're popular right now. Mm -hmm. It's it happened to parallel around the same time mm -hmm. when they started becoming more popular. Okay. Dog Leash did the original okay. reproduction tartan back in the 1950s, and it kind of was just sitting there in the background. La Karen coming out, another mill, coming out in the 2000s with weathered tartans and really promoting them. They came into their own in the mid 2010s, so 2015, oh. 18, huh. so which when they really started really becoming popular. Outlander. So I think Outlander kind of helped crest the wave and you know bump hmm. the wave up and okay. build it, versus okay. so it's 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 a little bit of at least in the U.S. I'll put it that way. Mm, could be um, a, could be a zeitgeist thing too. I mean, yeah. you see a lot more weathered. I don't know when the the fad for weathered uh, and tartans in wedding rentals in the U.K. Uh, it, it happened. happened with the tweeds. Mac, yeah. when were you married again? What year? Oh, he, oh, wait. I hope Brittany's not watching. <laughs> it took mm -hmm. you too long. Um, Mac got married in a black kilt, and that was right around the middle to tail end of the the solid black, you know, tartan, or solid black kilts being popular, the shadow tartans, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then after that kind of died off for a little bit, then the pipe band started going into the tweed jackets and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, that was 2010, 12 range. Um, and then out of that became popularity for the weathered tartans to match with more tweeds and that kind of yeah. thing, more earth tones. And then from there, and Outlander was around, do you know, what, do you know when the, the first season of Outlander was? Um, I um, want to say it was around then, 2015, 16-ish. I remember packing um, up the kilts for the Stars Network that we did. 2014. Yeah. Remember that? 2014 was the first year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So it's, they just, they hit on it. At the right time, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and it was already it was already yeah, building. Came, kind of a chicken and the egg thing, which came first? Or? I think the 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 weather tartans obviously came first because the yeah. you know nineteen fifties kind of thing. The popularity and, of them. I mean. Yes, exactly. It's it's they kind of propped each other up. It's two okay. guys standing okay. back to back, standing up. Got it. Um, that kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, shocker! The media influences <clears throat> fashion. Yeah. You know, it happens. Yeah. So it's, uh, it'll it'll keep changing. Yeah. keep changing there'll be always be those uh i think hollywood is definitely definitely getting more historic but 
you have to expect they will always bow to modern fashion somehow, just to make sure they can sell the product. Yes, so, yeah, there, yeah. You know, there's. It's not just the movie; it's the marketing of it. It's the you know the toys you sell with. It's everything having to do with it. It's like there's a lot bigger web than you think about. Merchandising, exactly. where the real money of the picture yeah. is made. Merchandising, merchandising, where the real money from the movie is made. <laughs> Spaceballs, the snow cone maker. Yep. <laughs> Outlander. <laughs> <laughs> Random tangent. You gotta love Mel Brooks. Um, so yeah, it's it's more than just the movie, and they think about it in bigger terms, I'm sure, than we're even thinking about. But it's yeah, yeah they're getting better on the whole, but it will always be affected by current day. It's we're right. we're kind of repeating ourselves, but yep. yeah, yeah, we're right on. Yeah. So indeed. Go. So what do you think? How bad is Hollywood at depicting Highland wear in movies? Are they as bad as we say they are? Let us know in the comments. If you want to see one movie that we think actually did something kind of cool and different with Highland wear, check out this video over here on Coming to America.